The four opioids became the focus of America's addiction crisis. Meth was the killer drug making headlines. Several laws helped curtail the abuse of meth. But now, a decade later, it's come back with a vengeance. In Oregon, 232 people died in 2016 from meth use. That's three times the number from 2006 and twice as many people who died from heroin. It's a similar story in Ohio and Kentucky and Iowa. At the California-Mexico border, U.S. Customs and Border Protection agents say they're seizing up to 20 times as much meth as they were just 10 years ago. The reason for the surge? When the U.S. cracked down, drug dealers in Mexico filled the void. Meth got cheaper and more pure, and now it's flooding back across the border. Our correspondent Jennifer Davis traveled to Pennsylvania, one state that is seeing a deadly surge. Just outside of Philadelphia, inside an old farmhouse dating back to 1806, an innovative cutting-edge effort is underway to help 11 young men battle back from drug addiction. It is a life and death battle. Steve Killily founded this long-term recovery community called Manor of Hope two years ago. Most residents come here battling opioid and alcohol addictions, but increasingly many are also mentioning another drug. More of our guys uh, every month have had exposure to meth. Some have been addicted, some have just used it, and it's very um, prevalent out on the street now. 30-year-old Max, who's been sober for just about a year, is one of them. He says the high of meth was psychologically addictive for him. You feel superhuman. You feel like you're, you're capable of anything, and you are, in fact, not. I was hallucinating. I didn't know what was real, what was fake. 21-year-old Parker, now sober for more than 13 months, also used meth and says it's the kind of drug that tears your whole life apart. It destroys everything that your soul, your soul and heart, everything that you are deteriorates because of this drug. Meth used to be very common because users could make it at home by combining a few ingredients available at virtually any grocery or hardware store, along with pseudoephedrine, which used to be sold over the counter. A key ingredient for meth, though, is now missing from pharmacy shelves. Pseudoephedrine is a decongestant, and if you want it these days, you now have to go directly to the pharmacist, give them your license, and there are very strict controls about buying it. They're tracking how much you buy and are required to report suspicious activity to the state. Pseudoephedrine regulations caused a temporary lull in meth use, but the drug is now making a comeback in great part due to Mexican cartels who are making and shipping highly potent concentrations over the border. So everything that I got, I had to find on the internet and was being shipped in from either Canada or Mexico. I remember one time I got it, it was inside, it was stuffed inside a Sharpie that had been <laughs> emptied out. Yeah, these guys get pretty clever. After almost non-existent numbers of meth overdoses in their county for several years, the coroner's office in Montgomery County, Pennsylvania experienced a startling resurgence three years ago that continues to skyrocket at an alarming pace. Since 2015, annual meth overdoses have jumped from two a year to almost two a month. We have increased um, our numbers by at least 300 fold. I mean, they have continued to go up. The victims coming through this coroner's office have been between the ages of 17 and 40. It ravages the entire body, involves almost always all the organs eventually. 911, where's your emergency? Meth overdose calls haven't risen to opioid levels yet in this community, but they're happening often enough that it's getting people's attention. <laughs> Paramedics are on the front lines. I've had three uh, methamphetamine overdoses recently, last one being three days ago. Uh, I've had one two weeks ago and then a previous one on Christmas Eve, so I've had three in two months, and it's definitely increasing, more than I've had previously in my career. Patients who overdose on opioids are often found passed out and not breathing. But meth is a stimulant, so calls relating to overdoses of this illegal drug can be far more challenging and unpredictable for emergency crews, since they often involve aggressive behavior, paranoia, and delusions. At any time can come right at you, become agitated, may attack you. One time we had a patient try to get him out of the stretcher and out of the ambulance while it was moving because he was having hallucinations and he just started working himself up. Montgomery County, a community of a little over 800,000, is working hard to get ahead of this problem. It has been designated by the White House as a high-intensity drug trafficking area. As for those who've experienced meth and lived to tell the tale, many say they have a warning for communities. If you don't start paying attention, 
it won't be in the shadow of opioids for long. Without <clears throat> the focus on it, without telling people about it and warning people about it, it's going to become the next epidemic. In Montgomery County, Pennsylvania, I'm Jennifer Davis for Matter of Fact.